dear students let us continue our study of this paper which is forensic chemistry and explosive and in the forensic chemistry section now we shall proceed towards the chromatographic methods of chemical analysis after studying this module you shall be able to know about the basic principle of chromatography you shall be able to know the various techniques of chromatography and the application of different techniques of chromatography in forensic analysis the chromatography term is actually not new to you you have learnt earlier also but we will revise and go in more depth because this is again a very very important tool for forensic scientist and especially the forensic chemist for analysis of various evidences you collect from the crime scene so let us begin with the introduction to chromatography the term chromatography is actually a combination of two greek words chroma which means color and graphene which means to write it is a term that is collectively used to refer to all the laboratory techniques which are employed to separate the different mixture components if we go back to history the credit for the development of this separation technique goes to michael fett a russian botanist in 1903 he was successful in separating plant pigment mixtures by using a calcium carbonate column with the application of this technique he discovered that instead of being a single compound the cream colored plant pigment is actually a mixture of different compounds till date several modifications have been made which resulted in the development of various modern chromatographic techniques the majority of which can be automated and adapted to deal with large or even minute quantities of different substances for their purification separation and even characterization now we will start with the principle of chromatography chromatography relies on the basic concept of differential solubilities and affinities of the different components of the mixture the mixture that is to be separate at out is dissolved in a suitable solvent called the mobile phase which carries it through the second component called the stationary phase thus choice of phases is purely dependent on the nature of the sample to be analyzed component having higher affinity towards the stationary phase will obviously get absorbed sooner than those which have less affinity thus the separation of various components of a mixture depends on their differential affinities towards the stationary phase moving on to distribution of components of a mixture between phases the distribution of components of a mixture or analytes between phases is a simple reaction an analyte is in a state of equilibrium between the two phases that is analyte in mobile phase is in equilibrium with analyte in stationary phase the equilibrium constant which is also known as partition coefficient denoted by k is defined as the analyte's molar concentration in stationary phase divided by the analyte's molar concentration in mobile phase retention time or tr is the time lag between injection of sample and an analyte reaching a detector connected at the end of the column each analyte of the sample will have its own characteristic retention time however 
TM is used to denote the time taken by the mobile face to pass the column length. Now moving on to classification of chromatographic techniques based on the principle of separation. Chromatographic techniques are chiefly classified into following two categories. First is adsorption chromatography. In this technique, the different components of the sample get separated based on their greater differential affinities to adsorb onto the solid stationary phase in comparison to the mobile phase. This principle is applicable when mobile phase is liquid and stationary phase is solid. Thus, the component that has higher affinity for the matrix of a stationary phase will more effectively compete for the binding sites and thereby causing displacement of all those components that have relatively lesser affinities. Second is partition chromatography. The first type of chromatography that was developed by chemists is partition chromatography. It employs a solvent retained on the surface of a solid supporting inert matrix. The analyte molecules partition between a liquid mobile and stationary phase. In this technique, the separation of sample molecules takes place on the basis of relative differences in their partition and dissolution in different phases. The components having higher affinity towards the mobile phase are separated quickly in comparison to those having higher affinity towards a stationary phase. Here both mobile and stationary phases are either liquid or may have liquid as a stationary phase and gas as mobile phase. The liquid exists as a thin layer on a solid surface and acts as a stationary phase. The analytes that are polar in nature diffuse and get retained into a stationary water layer associated with the polar stationary phase. The stronger the interactions between the polar analyte and the polar stationary phase as compared to the mobile phase, the longer will be the time of elution. Now moving on to common chromatographic techniques. The common chromatographic techniques that are employed in forensic analysis are paper chromatography, thin layer chromatography, column chromatography, gas chromatography, and lastly, high performance liquid chromatography. Moving on to paper chromatography. Paper chromatography is a chromatographic technique which is employed in the separation and identification of mixtures, especially pigments. This can also be employed in primary or secondary colors in experiments of ink. These days, TLC has largely replaced this technique, but still it is a powerful analytical tool. Principle The principle involved in paper chromatography is similar to those that is involved in other chromatographic techniques. Here, the stationary phase is a high quality paper and the developing solvent works as the mobile phase that migrates through this stationary phase, carrying the samples to be analyzed with it. The different components of the sample get separated based on their relative affinity towards the stationary phase versus 
their relative solubility in the mobile phase. Next, moving on to the procedure. The sample under analysis is placed on a filter paper, one end of which is immersed in a solvent. The solvent diffuses up the paper, thereby dissolving and separating the various sample components. Now, we'll study about the RF value. The retention factor or RF can be defined as the ratio of the distance traveled by the sample component and to the distance that is traveled by the solvent. RF values are generally denoted as a fraction up to two decimal places. If RF value of any sample comes out to be zero, that means the sample is immobile and is insoluble in the mobile phase. If RF value is equal to one, that means the solute has no affinity for the stationary phase and travels with the solvent front. Now moving on to the various types of paper chromatography. First is descending paper chromatography. In this type, the upper part of the paper contains the mobile phase and the development of chromatogram is done by the downward migration of the solvent is the ascending paper chromatography. In this type, the lower part of the paper contains the mobile phase and the development of the chromatogram is done by the upward migration of the solvent. Next is ascending descending paper chromatography. It involves the characteristics of both the above mentioned techniques. The upper part of the paper which carries ascending chromatography is turned over a rod so as to allow the paper to perform descending chromatography after that. Next is radial paper or circular chromatography. Here the sample is placed at the center of a circular filter paper. After drying the spot, the filter paper tied over a petri dish in such a manner so that the wick of the paper is dipped in the solvent present in that petri dish. The solvent moves upwards through the wick and the component of the mixture gets separated forming concentrated circular zone. Now moving on to applications of paper chromatography. Paper chromatography is helpful in analyzing the purity of various compounds and in the identification of toxic substances. Paper chromatography often requires samples in the smaller quantities and give quick results. This technique is also quite handy in the analysis of different dyes. Next, we'll study about thin layer chromatography. Thin layer chromatography or TLC is a chromatographic technique that is employed in separating a mixture of non-volatile substances. TLC is performed on a sheet of plastic, aluminium foil, glass etc which is coated with a thin layer of adsorbent material generally cellulose aluminium oxide or silica gel this adsorbent layer functions as the stationary phase after applying the sample on the plate the mobile phase made up of one or more solvents through capillary action is drawn up the plate. As different analytes have their own characteristic speed of migration, they get separated on this basis. Now, about the plate preparation. Generally, the TLC plates 
are commercially available with a wide range of article size for improving the results obtained. Such plates are made up of adsorbent materials like silica gel mixed with small quantity of inert binder commonly water and calcium sulfate. This mixture is coated in the form of an even layer on an unreactive carrier sheet usually plastic, aluminum foil or glass. The plate so prepared is dried and activated by heating it in an oven at a temperature about 110 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Adsorbent layer thickness generally ranges from 0.1 to 0.25 mm for analytical purposes and from 0.5 to 2 mm for preparative TLC. Now the procedure. The procedure adopted for carrying out TLC is as follows. About 1.5 cm from the bottom edge, a small spot of the sample under analysis is applied. A mobile phase, an appropriate amount is taken into a glass beaker. The plate is placed in the chamber in such a manner that none of the spot or spots touch the eluent surface. The solvent front migrates in the upward direction through capillary action and consequently separates the sample. The mobile phase and solute compete for the binding sites present on the stationary phase, leading to the separation of various components of a mixture. For instance, the normal silica gel is polar in nature and thus has a great affinity for the polar compounds. As a consequence of this, the compounds that are less polar in nature move higher up the plate which results in a comparatively high RF value. Now the analysis. As the separated chemicals may be colorless, a number of methods may be employed to visualize the spots. Black light or wavelength 366 nanometers could be used to detect analytes that are fluorescent in nature like quinine. Fluorescent compounds like manganese activated zinc silicate could be added to the stationary phase at the time of plate preparation which allows spot fluorescence under ultraviolet C light of wavelength 254 nanometers. The plate thus will fluoresce under UV light but analyte spots will interrupt this fluorescence. RF value of each spot is obtained by dividing the distance traveled by a component to the distance traveled by the solvent front. These values are totally dependent on the factors like nature of TLC plate, solvent used, etc. Now about the applications. TLC can be used to monitor a reaction's progress in identifying the different compounds of a mixture and in determining a substance purity. Specific examples of these applications may be as follows. Detection of toxic materials including pesticides or insecticides, analyzing the decomposition of fibers and inks, identification of medicinal plants and their constituents having toxic effects, etc. Now moving on to column chromatography.
is a chromatographic technique employed in purifying and identifying the individual chemical compounds from a mixture. The biggest advantage of this technique is that it is cost effective and the stationary phase used in it are easily disposable. Now about the column preparation. The column used is a tube made up of glass with the diameter from 5 millimeters to 50 millimeters and a height of 5 centimeters to 1 meter with a tap and some kind of a filter at the bottom of the tube. The methods that are generally used in column preparation are the dry method and the wet method. In the dry method, the column is filled up with dry powder that constitutes the stationary phase. After this, the mobile phase is made to pass through it until that powder becomes completely wet. For the wet method, a slurry is made by mixing up the powder of a stationary phase and the eluent outside the column. The slurry is then carefully packed in the column. Proper care should be taken so that bubbles are not formed during the packing. All the sample components show differential affinity towards the stationary phase and thus elute out of the column at different times along with the moving mobile phase. During this process, the element is gathered in a series of fractions. Fraction collector automatically collects these fractions. The chemical composition of each fraction is analyzed by any of the following methods UV absorption, fluorescence, etc. Next, moving on to stationary phase. In column chromatography, the stationary phase is a solid. Silica is the most common, followed by alumina. Generally, these stationary phases are microporous and finely ground gels or powders. This increases the surface area. The ratio between the weight of analyte and stationary phase that can be applied onto the column is also very important. This ratio ranges from 1 is to 20 to 1 is to 100 for silica column. Now the mobile phase. A single or a mixture of solvents could be used as mobile phases. The nature of the compound under analysis affects the choice of the mobile phase. A correct choice of mobile phase can give accurate results with a higher degree of resolution. All sample components show differential affinity towards the stationary phase and thus elute out of the column at different times along with the moving mobile phase. Gravitational pull is the only force that works on a simple laboratory column. But in modern versions, a much faster flow rate is achieved by employing compressed gases like argon, nitrogen, etc. or by making use of a pump to push the mobile phase through the column. In flash column chromatography, the grain size of the adsorbent material that makes up stationary phase is finer in comparison to the gravity column chromatography. Now about the resolution calculation. The element that pass out through the column are collected as fraction by a fraction collector attached 
at the end of the column. But before this process of fraction collection, each fraction is made to pass through a detector, most commonly a spectrometer, so as to make a qualitative as well as quantitative analysis. Now, about the applications of column chromatography. It is useful in both the qualitative and the quantitative analysis of various suspicious substances found at the scene of crime. It helps in identifying the nature and type of a substance which help in linking the criminal with the crime scene. Next is gas chromatography. Gas chromatography or GC is a popular analytical technique employed in separating and analyzing the volatile compounds. Principle in GC a carrier gas constitutes the mobile phase. Usually an unreactive gas like nitrogen or an inert gas like helium. A microscopic layer of liquid present on the metal or glass beads constitutes the stationary phase. Gaseous compounds under analysis interact with the stationary phase which causes each component to elute out of the column at a different time which is called the retention time of that component. Now, the basic principle of GC is similar to other previously mentioned chromatographic techniques. It has various marked differences too. Firstly, in GC, the mobile phase is a gas and the stationary phase is liquid. Whereas, in column chromatography, liquid acts as a mobile phase and a solid as a stationary phase. Hence, gas liquid chromatography is the full name of this technique. Secondly, there is an oven which contains column through which the mobile phase passes to control the temperature of the gas, whereas there is no such temperature control in column chromatography. Procedure in a GC analysis, a known quantity of liquid or gaseous analyte is injected into the column through a micro syringe. As the mobile phase migrates down the column, the various sample components gets adsorbed on the stationary phase based on their relative affinities. This rate of migration not only depends upon the nature of stationary and mobile phases, but also on the sample under analysis. Since all the sample components show differential affinity towards the stationary phase and thus elute out of the column at different times along with the moving mobile phase, fraction collector automatically collects these fractions. The chemical composition of each fraction is analyzed by any of the following method like UV absorption, fluorescence, etc. Next, moving on to analysis. Analysis can be done on the following two grounds. First, is qualitative analysis. Chromatographic data generally is presented in the form of a graph having retention time on x-axis and detector response on y-axis. Such a graph is known as chromatogram. Qualitative analysis is based on retention time, that is different sample components can be identified. The peak patterns remain constant for a given component if the operating conditions 
are kept constant in modern applications. GC is connected to a mass spectrometer which acts as a detector to complement gas chromatography or GCMS. Next is quantitative analysis. In a chromatogram, the peak area represents the amount of a particular sample component. The concentration of each component of the analyte in the sample is calculated by determining the peak area. Now, the applications. This chromatographic technique is employed in the qualitative and the quantitative analysis of various suspicious substances like analysis of body fluids, fibers, etc. found at the scene of crime. It helps in identifying the nature and type of substance which help in linking the criminal with the crime scene. Gas chromatography, mass spectrometry is a popular method for analysis of ignitable liquids in arson cases. Now, moving on to high performance liquid chromatography. HPLC is a chromatographic technique that not only separate different mixture components but also identifies and quantifies them. The main component of this instrument is the pump that helps in passing a pressurized the mobile phase containing the sample mixture to pass through the column filled with a stationary phase. Each component of the sample reacts differently towards the stationary phase causing the different components to flow out at different rates which lead to the separation of the components of that sample. The stationary phase is a solid granular substance made up of materials like silica, polymers, etc. having a size range of 2 to 50 micrometers. The various components of a mixture get separated based on the grounds of the differential affinity towards a stationary phase. The pressurized mobile phase could be a mixture of solvents like water, acetonitrile or methanol. Its temperature and composition are the chief influencing factors of this technique. HPLC has marked differences from its traditional low pressure version as here operational pressures are markedly higher that is 50 to 350 bar contrary to this traditional version was totally dependent on the gravitational pull for the movement of solvent through the column as HPLC is capable to analyze even the minute sample size. The diameter of column may vary between 2.1 to 4.6 millimeters and the length between 30 to 250 millimeters. Along with this, the average particle size of HPLC are also comparatively smaller, ranging from 2 to 50 micrometer. The high resolving power of HPLC makes it a popular analytical technique. Now, the operation. The sample under analysis is introduced in the column along with the stream of mobile phase. The different mixture components elute out the column at different rates on the basis of their relative affinity towards the stationary phase, which in turn depends on the chemical nature of each component, as well as the nature and the composition of the mobile phase and stationary phase. The time taken by an analyte to come out of the column is called 
take its retention time, which is an identifying feature of that particular analyte. Now moving on to the parameters. First is internal diameter. The internal diameter of the column is a significant parameter of HPLC that not only affects the separation but also the sensitivity of the instrument. Indirectly, it controls the amount of analyte that can be packed in the column. Next is particle size. The smaller the particle size, more will be its surface area and the better will be the separation that it will provide. But the pressure that is required for optimum linear velocity increases by the inverse of the particle diameter squared. Thus, changing to particles to half of their size will double the performance, but the increased pressure must be increased by a factor of 4. Next, moving on to pump pressure. The performance of pumps is measured based on their ability to yield a reproducible and consistent flow rate. It may achieve a pressure as high as about 400 atmospheres. Various improvements have been made to modern HPLC systems to make them work at even higher pressures and consequently much smaller particle sizes ranging about less than 2 micrometers. These are called ultra HPLC systems. Now the applications of HPLC. High performance liquid chromatography is an important forensic technique often used in cases involving drug trafficking, it is used in detecting performance enhancing drugs from urine samples and separating the components of a different biological sample. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module focusing on chromatography in the forensic chemistry paper, you have become familiar with chromatography, its principle and its various types. The term chromatography is actually a combination of two Greek words that is chroma meaning color and graphene meaning to write. And we have learned that it is the term which is used collectively to refer to all the laboratory techniques which are employed in the separation of different components of mixtures. Chromatography we have studied relies on the basic concept of differential solubilities and affinities of various mixture components in different phases. The mixture that is to be separated out is dissolved in a suitable solvent which is known as the mobile phase and it carries it through the second component of this technique which is called as the stationary phase. In adsorption chromatography, we have studied the different components of the sample get separated on the basis of their greater differential affinities to adsorb to the solid stationary phase in comparison to the mobile phase. And this principle is applicable when mobile phase is liquid and stationary phase is solid. We also studied that the first type of chromatography that was developed by chemist is the partition chromatography. It employs a solvent retained on the surface of a solid supporting inert metric. Analyte molecules partition between a liquid mobile and stationary phase and in this method analytes they get separated on the basis of their differential polarities. The common chromatographic techniques that are employed in forensic analysis are paper chromatography, TLC, column chromatography, gas chromatography and HPLC. However, all these chromatographic techniques work on the same principle and with the advent of modern techniques, there are even 
newer methods of chromatographic techniques which have been evolved and there will be more detailed discussion in further paper where we will be focusing on the instrumentation. So, there again we will be dealing with the chromatography where focus will be on the other instrument as well.